This is the FlipNerd.com Expert Real Estate Investing Show, the show for real estate investors. Whether you're a veteran or brand new, I'm your host, Mike Hambright, and each week I bring you a new expert guest that will share their knowledge and lessons with you. If you're excited about real estate investing, believe in personal responsibility, and taking control of your life and financial destiny, you're in the right place. This is episode number 378, and my guests today are Rick Allen and TJ Osterman from Paperstack. Rick and TJ are note investors, but before they started in notes, they were wholesalers focused on wholesaling properties. As the market started to rebound and become more competitive, they fell into the note space and have never looked back. Today we talk about why they invest in notes instead of properties directly and what the pros and cons are between traditional property investing and note investing. As you'll see, they're really not as different as you might think. Let's get started demystifying the world of note investing. Please help me welcome Rick and TJ to the show. Hey, Rick and TJ, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, happy to be here. Yeah, I'm excited to talk to you guys because, you know, I, for, a lot of people assume I have a ton of real estate investing experience, which I've bought hundreds of houses. I know a lot of people, but I'm always excited to talk about different ways to invest that I don't even do. And so I always have to kind of restrain myself a little bit to not get shiny object syndrome and jump into something uh, totally different like you guys did. But I know yeah. notes are really a, a, a pretty incredible opportunity after folks learn more about it. Yeah, they definitely are. Um, just in the, at its core, mortgage notes. We made the jump in there. Um, it was a shiny object for us. You know, yeah. we saw and it, we made that pivot, but it's been very lucrative for us so far. You know. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, we made that pivot because we saw a lack of inventory from coming where we're from. We were coming from that background of buying and selling homes, and yeah. uh, the inventory in 08 was starting to become very thin. Yeah. And uh, we decided, wow, in order to support our families, what are we going to do? I mean, we're, you know, in Texas, it was a little bit different of a story as we were first talking about. Yeah, but, yeah. but in Florida, man, it was uh, it really got hit hard. And so we were moving from 30 houses a month down to like, you know, in 12. Yeah, we, we started five. losing inventory to the uh, the hedge funds and um, kind of stumbled into mortgage notes. And uh, we really never looked back. Yeah. That's awesome. Hey, before we get started too much on notes, why don't you tell us your background? You just alluded to a little bit of it, but kind of tell us how you got started and then start to talk a little bit about how you transitioned into notes. Sure. Um, well, my name is Rick Allen. I've been in uh, Orlando, Florida for most of my life. I'm 37. So for 30 years, I've been here. So I'm, I say I'm a native Floridian at best. Um, I started investing in real estate in 2005. I joined a nationwide wholesale firm and sort of cut my teeth in the real estate business, learning to evaluate properties. Yep. And yep. Um, in 2006, met TJ who came to work for the firm. And we worked together at this firm until about 2008, in which time we decided it was time to go into business for ourselves. And we started our own shop. Yep. We had two offices, about 45 employees, and we flipped about 400 houses. Oh, wow. In, in, yeah, in about three years. So and then in 2011, we decided to exit the the uh, the world of having employees and, and went on our own. Yeah. And in 2012, started to do um, mortgage notes. Um, you know, an REO agent called us. We jumped in and never looked back. And now we run a small fund of about six million bucks and are currently in the middle of doing a Reg A plus offering. Yeah, I'm glad you remember all those dates because I, I'm horrible with those timelines. So 2012, no, I'm trying to <laughs> yeah. recount. Okay, yeah, that's it. So I'm uh, TJ Osterman. I'm originally Chicago, Illinois. Um, I'm 40 years old now, so I've been here, geez, what, 15 years, I think it is. Yeah, about 15 years. Originally, um, you know, started cutting my teeth. I sold magazine subscriptions uh, door to door when I was 18, <laughs> traveling the country. And then I got into, uh, decided I wanted to... Um, you know, become a, a teaching professional in golf, got that into, and that's what kind of got me down to, to Florida. Um, and I, then I found my first house. I flipped that, made a bunch of money in it and said, I like real estate. So I got into the yeah. real estate game and uh, it worked out really, really well and started working um, with Rick at, yeah. um, at our old uh, company and um, where we sourced a lot of uh, hard money for investors, hooked the, you know, the, the investors up with the hard money and then hooked the houses up yeah. with the inventory. And, um, like Rick said, he put it all together already. We um, started our own shop and, and did really, really well. But then, you know, the inventory started lacking a lot. Mm -hmm. And so we decided to sell off our portion of the uh, of the company and um, start on our way to mortgage notes. That's awesome. That's awesome. So yeah. tell us a little bit about what 
what notes are. I mean, it's it's you know when people hear it, they're surprised. It, 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 sometimes that note, that word, that phrase, like confuses people that it's essentially just a mortgage or a loan against a property. But maybe just tell us a little bit more about what what a note is and what what the transition kind of looked like from going to um, being an investor that's wholesaling houses to effectively a note investor. Go ahead, jump on it. Well, um, let's see that transition. Well, let's first talk about like the the mortgage what note. Is the, it? Yeah. The, the the note is just the debt owed owed on the house. So you're essentially buying that debt. So if there's you know when you take out that uh, that mortgage on a house, you're taking out a loan. Um, and so you know that that note is let's say one hundred and fifty thousand mm-hmm. dollars. It's financed like I say seventy percent of um, a value. Let's just say. Um, so you're buying that debt of 150,000, and what we do is we buy that um, generally non-performing debt at a discount. So at a high level, that's what a note is. Yeah, um, yeah. It's just, it's that debt that you see, and then the mortgage. Yeah, a lot of times the banks will will hold this. You know, whenever you get a mortgage, it's from a bank, maybe like Bank of America or Chase. And if somebody happens to have a, you know a string of bad luck, they stop making their payments. Maybe something like 2008 when everybody stopped making their payments, or a lot of people did. Yeah. They package all that stuff up and sell sell it off. Right. And that's that's sort of how it hits the streets. They sell it to a big fund, who then will break that up and sell it to some smaller funds, and then we would come in. Yeah. And then the note basically just has the terms on it. That's yeah. what the terms of what the borrower is agreeing to pay at a super right. high. That's what it is. You know. Yeah. And then that mortgage wraps it all around together, and that's what's what ties you to that collateral, which is the house. Right. So it's a, it's a secured investment. Yeah. You know. Um, yep. not diving too much into that because it's, it gets a little boring, but that's, that's kind of what it is. And then, yeah. you know, that, that transition of, um, where we came from, it, it seemed like a really nice pivot because it wasn't that out of left field. Um, we saw an opportunity to stay within the real estate market. Yeah. The small balance real estate market is what we thrived in, you know, um, houses that are no worth more than 175,000 and below. Okay. And, um, we had an opportunity to buy a note from yeah. an REO agent who we were buying all of our, um, investments yeah. from yeah. all of our properties. And we said, uh, yeah, we'll take a look at a mortgage note. We have no idea what it is, but it seems like a good deal. The underlying collateral, which was the house. Yeah, we knew the collateral very well. It was in our backyard and it was in an area that we'd been buying and selling houses in for years. And um, the agent called and said, hey, I've got this house or this this note. If you're interested, um, just high numbers. It was $90,000 of debt that we picked up for 8400 bucks. Yep. It was a frame duplex. And so we- uh, You don't have to run your numbers much on that. No, I mean, in no. the, in the the house at eighty four hundred dollars. Um, I mean, what could we have sold? You know, well, what was the, the, the bottom stuff, line numbers? Yeah, were? the stuff was selling in the area we knew for like nineteen to twenty thousand, and um, we wound up getting a deed in lieu on it and listing on the market. It actually sold for thirty eight thousand, and we did it all in about a little under twenty days from the time we first put out the money till we got the money back in from selling it. So yeah. we were. Needless to say, hook, line, and sinker in the and, business. And, and he yeah, just said yeah. a term that probably a lot of people that aren't in notes or mortgage industry don't know it, which is deed in lieu. It's a, it's so when you get a house back, you can either go through foreclosure, or you can reach out to the borrower and say, "Look, give us your deed in lieu of foreclosure. We'll give yeah. you some money and give right. us the deed, so we don't have to deal with the foreclosure process." And right. some so people sometimes like, you might pay them to money. pay them to yeah. leave or cash for keys or something exactly. like it's, it's that. Let's not keys. go for the, through the foreclosure process. Let's not get that on your record. Uh, Just sign yeah. the property back over to us and let's avoid all that. Right. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that's cool. So, um, so specifically, uh, you're buying, you're buying notes and you're doing them and you're generally just buying them locally. So in the event that you have to take the house back, you're comfortable because you've been investing in your market for a long time. So you're getting houses in your market. Worst case scenario. I know you guys try to get them performing again. Right. But, Uh um, yeah. 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 Normally we, we started out buying locally and now we buy, uh, we buy nationwide. Okay. Um, it was, I think that's the natural progression of what I've seen when somebody goes from buying, um, houses to, uh, diversifying and buying mortgage notes is you just naturally you start looking in your backyard because we always want to see the investment that we can go up and touch and feel and right, know that it's right. there. And then once you get into the paper side of the business, um, after you're there for a while, you'll learn that well, I can actually go leverage other people to to touch it and feel it, and you start you start you know spiraling out. Yep. So talk a little bit about like how this occurs. So obviously a bank, any of the notes that they're selling to you. And by the way, you know, for people that, uh, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not an expert, so correct me if I say something wrong here for sure, is that um, 
it's very common for these notes to be sold multiple times to different investors, different banks, right? So you're not doing anything that, that big banks haven't been doing for a long time. Um, but other investors, it's just investors like us can, can play in this space and more and more are playing in this space, right? So, But the banks could – Technically, they could go through the whole foreclosure process and foreclose, or they could just sell the non-performing note to somebody like you or me or any other investor, and they say, look, I just don't want to deal with all that. Just mm -hmm. take the note and you guys deal with it, right? Are you looking to change your life through real estate investing? If you're interested in either getting started or taking your business to the next level, please check out FlipNerd's private program at theinvestormachine.com. This is the most robust real estate investor coaching, networking, and mastermind on the planet and designed for your success. If you're ready to roll up your sleeves, ready to take personal responsibility for your own success, and ready to dive into a world-class instructional coaching program that provides you step-by-step -step instruction to help you achieve financial freedom, then you should apply today. Spaces are limited and candidates are only considered after an application and interview process. Our 12-month investor program is unparalleled. Think you might be a fit? Learn more today at theinvestormachine.com. Mm -hmm. Take the note and you guys deal with it, right? Yeah, I mean, at a high level, let's just say this is what happens. It's like it's like a huge funnel. At the top, you know, they'll be trading hundreds and trading. I mean, buying and selling notes. So they're tr selling notes. These huge funds will buy hundreds of thousands of mortgages. Yeah, they'll work them for a while, and then the ones that give them a little bit of problems, they'll generally, you know. Send, sell them off to a, a mid-size fund. Then yeah. that mid-size fund do the same exact thing, thing and then sell them down to like a smaller fund, smaller funds to micro funds. Yeah. And yeah. we're kind of in that micro fund type of atmosphere where we're buying, they call it the tails of the tape, the real problem children, yeah. Yeah. The, um, yeah. the island of the misfit toy um, <laughs> mortgages. The, the problem is that people don't fail to realize that there's families and there's real life situations yeah. on the end of each one of these mortgage notes. So right. what happens that we're seeing a lot is, is these people will start, um, let's say the big bank starts a loss mitigation process with the borrower. Well, they're running through it. They're doing all their paperwork. They sell the note. Now that next person doesn't honor what that other person said. This Now this borrower is like, I'm confused. What's going on? And this can go on for five, six, seven, eight years where these people yeah. don't know what's going on. They're not, they're not paying their mortgage because first they don't even know where to pay the mortgage to. Wow. Um, property taxes aren't getting paid. So that's kind of what, you know, without diving too far into that, that's how that works. And yeah. if you were to attach a number to that, would you say like 500 million is what you're going to need to buy from a bank or maybe 100 million at the very least? And then when that gets broken off, it gets broken off into say 25 to $50 million chunks. And then when it gets broken off down to the smaller investor, you yeah. can maybe do a one-off. And, and let's let's face it, the amount of money that we burn, let's just say on one mortgage note that has a very small margin, we can operate on tighter margins because we don't have a giant, you know, it fits our business model, right? right? It's the, the smaller investor. Yeah. These big banks, if something's, if the underlying collateral's $35,000, the man hours that it takes sometimes to get a $35,000 house worth to reperform, is, is a long time. So right. they're just, it's, it's just not part of their business model. Right. And to tell right. you the truth, they didn't have, the institutions didn't have the, the system put in place to handle what happened in 08. They got right, bombarded sure. with a lot of mortgage notes that yep. were non-performing going through foreclosure. And they're like, our system wasn't meant for this. So really what it is, is it's the, what's going on right now is the carnage of, of 2008. That's where the opportunity is yeah. in this space is yep. the opportunity is rose sure. from the carnage that, now we're just getting to start to clean up these small balance uh, mortgage right. notes. And, and truthfully, the opportunity for you guys or other investors that are interested in doing what we're going to talk about today is you, you kind of mentioned you're getting the tailings, like the, the worst of the worst in terms of uh, headache to process maybe, is you're, you're able to get those for essentially you know pennies on the dollar, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah it's for they're, sure. the, they're the worst performing of the worst performing, right? Typically. They're the worst performing and, and, and typically just the lower um, the lower price band asset stuff underneath that's right. worth at least 175000 They have less margin for error. And so the big banks who do have the giant payrolls, they just they sell those off. Right. The hedge funds sell those off and they, they're really focused on the higher end stuff. So yep. there's a real niche market. That, they're not all just super – they're not all big problems. There's right, a lot right. of stuff in there that's like – some really, really good quality assets. Oh, I'm sure there are, yeah. It just but, slipped right through the cracks. Right, right. I get it. Awesome, awesome. Well, let's talk about a little bit about why you guys did it. So I know you were you were kind of 
uh, as the market started to improve, like it, it's become harder and harder to do deals. And you guys saw this as a way to say, hey, notes are, you probably would agree with this. Like right now in real estate investing, if you're a wholesaler, fix and flipper or whatever, it's, it's harder than it's been in the 10 years that I've been in this to find deals right now. It's mm -hmm. gotten more competitive. But the note space is still, there's still not nearly as much competition. Would, would you guys agree with that? Yeah, I think that's a, it's a very accurate statement. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, it, all the, the stuff for the last about six years we've been doing the notes, we've been going to conferences in the more in the, in the mortgage note space, and we're starting to see an uptick in the amount of people that are starting to, um, and, and to tell you the truth, majority of them are um, real estate investors that are saying, you know, I want another source. I want to diversify my portfolio. I right. own 100 houses, but let's also own 100 reperforming mortgages without having to fix the toilets. Right. You know, it's, 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 a, it's a good, it's a very yield hungry atmosphere out there right now. Yeah. In the yeah. I mean, truthfully, uh, I'm, I'm selling off. I have a rental portfolio, not a huge one, but I have a rental portfolio and, uh, we're starting to sell or finance a couple of our houses that are a couple of our dogs. And there, there are definitely days when I wake up and I'm like, I'm going to sell or finance them all. <laughs> that, that's a huge, huge, especially in Texas. That's a yeah. very, very big, uh, yeah. that's a very big play, which, yeah. I, you know, without going, that's a whole nother show is the seller financing right. stuff. Um, but that's a fantastic opportunity for people that aren't able to afford. Let's face it. Rents aren't cheap right now. I mean, right. I don't know what they are in yeah, Texas. Yeah, they're, they're blowing right up. They're blowing up. It's, yeah. It's insane what you can get as an investor. You're like, great. But as somebody looking for affordable for housing, rent. you're like, holy cow. So if you can right. have a house and, and offer owner financing to somebody, um, even at 10 to 12% interest rate, it's still, people, you know, 50% yeah. less than what the rent would be. Right. Uh, and for you to be able to turn that, yeah. it's like, what double did you use? And the, and the reason I'm interested in doing more of that is I usually take my kind of problem rentals. Like I keep having a problem with this one. Let me let me eliminate the vacancy and the maintenance and some of the stuff that is my issue and let, let the homeowner uh, be worried about that. But it's the same thing as you guys. It's like, look, I'm just saying at some point, it's just easier to be the bank. <laughs> it's easier to become the bank. It's I, I love interest payments. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, it's nothing better as getting that cash out after they made – six years of mortgage payments and you get a big check right away. You're like, yes. Well, yeah. And too, if, if you're speculating for the trends of, of investing, investing in what investors are looking for and where the most money is, um, you know, in that, like the self-directed IRA market or 401k market, there's a bunch of people that are um, tired, sick and tired of investing in mutual funds and ETFs as a, as a way to diversify. Um, they're sick of that, the volatility of that market and they're very yield hungry. And so what they want is they want, um, an investment that's going to get them an eight to 12% yield over yeah. time yeah. and not have to fix toilets and stuff. A yeah. mortgage note is exactly that. A reperforming yeah. mortgage note, as we saw, was going to be our product of choice to be able to sell. And so that's what our, you know, our main, main goal is, is to buy these non-performers at a discount, really give them an opportunity, um, underwrite the, the, the mortgage again to where it makes sense for this borrower to pay on it. Yep. Um, season it up. When I say season, I mean, just have them, let them make some payments to show good, good credibility and um, offer that to the secondary market to where, uh, to tell you the truth, we can't, we can't get enough of them. Yeah. So if there's a pool of 50 reperforming mortgages that are between eight to 12% yields, go to any self-directed IRA guy or, or, or custodian and say, you know, do you have people looking for mortgage notes? They're going to say yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah we actually set up a, a retail outlet for these online to where I'd say a majority of all of our sales are all strictly to the uh, self-directed IRA space. They're all looking for that yield. Yeah. That's, yeah. and that's where we're in with paper stack is our yeah. technology piece that, um, you know, in order to increase liquidity on these, you have to be able to sell these on the secondary market. Well, in the mortgage note space, unfortunately, it's, it falls into the fin, fintech world. And if you know, um, the technology in fintech is just, it's non-existent. It's starting to come about right, now. Right. But we added some technology to the um, to that space, into the mortgage yeah. uh, note market that or it's it's more of a, it's it's a system and more of a process um, with paper sure. stack than anything. Where sure. it, it increases that transparency and ease of use because in the past, if I wanted to go buy uh, mortgage notes, it's still like this. They're going to send you over a, a, an Excel spreadsheet of 50 rows in 20 columns. Yeah. It basically it just it's, made it to where we can take this mainstream and anybody can start looking at it. Yeah, things. yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's awesome. Hey, I want to mm -hmm. clarify one thing uh, just for people that are listening that, that some of them may have got lost is like a performing note versus a non-performing note. So a performing note, and correct me if I'm wrong, so a performing note is there there are big lenders that just originate they make enough money originating and then selling off a note that's performing meaning that the 
the more the the owner of the home that purchased the property that has the note is paying they're making payments just fine but that lender just wants to sell that off so talk a little bit is that right that's your hundred. You're yeah. right on. Yeah, so, they, so and, and when lenders sell those to each other, they don't discount them as much because they're not as risky, right? So talk about kind of take it from there, and then talk about nine performing and how the more payments they've missed, the more risky it appears to be. The more that a lender would have to discount that to sell it to somebody else to kind of clean up that mess, if you will. Sure. Yeah. When when it, like you said, when a, a lender originates a loan, they usually a lot of times they'll even sell it at par. There's there's no discount at all um, on newly originated stuff. And when they are making their payments, they're performing assets, and they're usually are gonna they're gonna be a paper. So um, there's gonna be especially if you're buying something now, there's there's typically gonna be some equity in the property, and the the buyer or the the borrower on the loans can have skin in the game. Yep. When somebody stops making their payments, um, there's the, the the value of the note starts dropping. The grade on the note will stop dropping. So maybe somebody's 30, 60, or 90 days behind, you're gonna, you're probably dropping to a B paper or a C paper. Once you go past 90 plus days and they stop making payments, um, the value on that asset drops and you start buying those loans at maybe say 50 cents on the dollar, yeah. 45 cents on the dollar, depending on the price band. If it's a really cheap asset, um, maybe something worth 50,000, you may be somewhere down in 30 cents for the dollar. So yep. the, the lower the price band and the, the further behind they are, the bigger the discount you're going to get. Okay. Um, whereas if it's performing or it's a re-performing loan, you can get 80 cents, 90 cents on the dollar of the um, principal balance. And so talk about that. So that's really your play is to take, I think, is to take one of these notes that are non-performing and get it to be performing again, right? You call the person, exactly. you try to work out a new plan of like, why are you not paying? How can we get you paying again? You got you're either going to get foreclosed on or let, but we want to keep you in the house. So let's get the loan performing again. And then so talk about that. And then and then ultimately when you get it performing again, it's worth much more and then you can sell it off to another investor, right? Right. Yeah, if you yeah. can buy something at 30 cents on the dollar and then and, you know restart their loan, maybe set it back up for 30 years and they start making you know, 12, 15 payments, all that's interest. And then they've got a track record of making payments. Well, then you can now sell that loan at maybe 70, 75, 80 cents right. of the principal balance. And there's your spread plus all the payments you just collected. Yeah, yeah. we started we started buying like non-performing notes with the idea of we, we don't want an owner in there. We just want the inventory. We just want the, the house back. And we realized that the amount of cash burn that goes in into one of those non-performing notes is diabolical it's unbelievable yeah. you, have to, you have to mow the lawn you have to if it's in a, an area where the house freezes you got to winterize it you have to if there's windows broken you have to board it up or else you're getting and those taxes too are accruing that you're talking if about every single if it's a judicial state you got to pay for foreclosure fees and, and so when we when we realized the amount of cash burn that we were going through and then you're servicing these too you know we're paying a third-party servicer to stay in compliance and, and under there's a big you know the regulations on in this market are huge you don't yeah. want to deal with that so you give them to a third-party servicer to service that's costing you 100 bucks 85 bucks every single month that you're holding this thing right. and then you got to try to trust somebody to rehab the home everybody yep. out there that knows if you're not there every day on a rehabbed home uh those guys aren't coming to work a lot of the time right right like, what is going on so then we started to realize wow the re-performing loan was a lot less um cash burn oh you get cash you can get cash start coming in immediately yeah yeah, yeah. so you know that's that's kind of where that opportunity of of um people are looking at you yeah know, that, but, a lot of the times, investors, it's a fantastic way to get. Mm -hmm. There's so yeah, much. So it's kind of like. Um, so uh, we talk a lot about, and in, in the in the actual property investing stuff, a lot. We talk. I talk a lot about wholesaling. I've primarily been a retailer, yeah. like I rehab, I saw, right? So I, you guys are, are your business is really not that different. I, I, I want people that are listening to make that connection. You're buying at a wholesale price, and effectively, you're doing what we would refer to as a whole tail. You're like, you're not fully rehabbing it, but you're, you're adding a little bit of value to fix it up and get it good enough for the next person. I mean, that's probably a decent analogy, right? Yeah, it's exact. I love that. I, I just saw uh, that today. I was checking out your site and I saw that wholetailing thing and I was like, did they miss do wholesale? And then no, but I love that analogy. It's yeah. really good. Yeah. Too. I mean, yeah, I mean, and that is, that's why we, we like that, that the pivot wasn't too far, right? We would buy houses that needed work, right? Add yep. some value to them, not completely rehab them and then sell them again. Right. Yep. And so now we're buying notes 
that need work. So we add some value by, yeah. by recreating some of the collateral documents and stuff like that. Cause that's generally what you're doing is you're having to do more paperwork and stuff and getting all that stuff right. done up. And then we're adding value that way and selling them again on that, um, on the secondary market. Yep. So yep. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a fan, it's a really good pivot for investors that are in the real estate market. Yeah. Yes. There's, there's also stuff out there. There's government funds out there that will help get these borrowers caught up. And if you can tap into those, um, they really will pad your bottom line. Um, you know, we've got checks, eighteen, twenty thousand dollars on stuff we paid thirteen grand for. Well, it's yeah. almost like buying. It's almost like buying a <laughs> rehabbed, like a really bad home that's just been through the ringer for let's say twenty five thousand dollars, and then the government coming in and, and subsidizing you, like giving you twenty thousand dollars for that because yeah. you took on this this issue yeah. and helped it to come to resolve and. Um, and that's recapping you. So now you're into this thing for five thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and you're like, "Whoa, okay." Now we're yeah. talking. Interesting. Yeah. So that's there's a lot of programs out there, and that kind of works into how many different exit strategies, which is interesting. Yeah, and, talk about that a little because we, obviously on the house side, you, you really have just a couple of exit strategies, right? I mean, you can fix it up, you can kind of wholesale it, you could wholesale it just as it is. Um, my guess is when you guys buy them at a wholesale price. Unless you add some value, it's very difficult for you to resell that and make money just as it is generally, probably. But, but anyway, you've got we could wholesale it on. You could wholesale it like you fix it up a little bit mm -hmm. and sell it to the next investor, or you could totally rehab it and sell it to an end user, or you could keep it as a rental. But there's very few kind of levers on the property side. But with notes, it's like almost anything you can imagine you could you could right. do, right? Yeah. So yeah, talk about talk about that a little bit, just kind of how that differs and why that was more appealing than on the property side. Well, it was definitely um, for us. It was more appealing whenever we got into a loan that we we knew that we had the option of we had a waterfall of stuff we we tried to do. First of all, we want to try to keep people in their house and get them paying again. Yeah, I love yeah. cash income streams coming in, and um, so that was option one. But we also knew then if we we couldn't save save the house, that we had to get the house back. There were multiple ways that we were going to be able to get the house back via a deed in lieu of foreclosure, a short sale. If the if they want to short sale the property, we're able to do you know help them with that. Or you know if we have to, worst case would be a foreclosure. But then once you have the property back, you're able to do business as usual. Especially for the guys that are in already in real estate, we knew that it was all right. It's business as usual. We got that property back. Let's either wholesale it out, wholesale it out, yeah. fix yeah. it up, and retail it. Um, I know. It's it's still I think amazing to me that today we were just working on a deal that we're probably going to wind up having to um, offer a deed in lieu of foreclosure to get back, but we're going to be into it for forty eight cents on the dollar mm -hmm. on a house that's worth one hundred and forty thousand. That's I don't know where you can go get margins like that right now right, in right. the in the in the investment space. Well, right. yeah, I mean, you're cre what was very exciting is when we realized that what you're doing is you're creating an income stream and with that income stream you can sell off a portion of that income stream too, which is another exit strategy. Oh, yeah. You have 360 payments, let's just say you re redid this loan, you collect 6. So now there's 354 payments left, right? If somebody wants to buy 140 of those payments, you can sell them the 140 of those payments, okay? And then what happens is those revert back to you at the end. So if people that are into numbers can start to figure out, if I could sell 140 or 150 of those payments for what I'm into the loan for, they call it partials, yep. then when that thing comes back to me, there's still debt owed to me. Now I'm in it for nothing, right? Because that and was it's sold. Income, and yeah. it's, it's income that if I'm holding in a self-directed or a 401k, uh, you know, self-directed IRA or 401k account, a lot of the times are, are there's very good tax uh, That's great benefits. Yeah. So yeah. Um, there's just so many people that are into the finance world can understand that you're creating an income stream that you have the ability to sell off portions of it if you wanted to keep the whole thing. So just the multiple different ways to be creative um, was very, very tantalizing. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and so let's talk a little bit about uh, the spreads. I mean, it sounds like you're generally making more on deals than maybe you were when you were on the property side. Typically, um, if we if we go to if we have to take a property back, yeah, we're down. I mean, there's there's usually more margin there, and I would say I equate it to we're buying it um, what I was buying houses for in 2012. That's what we're able to acquire properties for. So if you could turn back the clock and buy houses like 2012 prices, that's essentially what it is. But also then. Um, our margins are pretty high on the um, the reperforming side, yeah. Because yeah. you're able to collect all those payments and then 
it's a different play too. Yeah, it's, it's a, a yield. Play. It's your, it's your, it's your, you know, your, your, um, your income over time. And, and it's like more of a longer play, but that's, if you ever, if you ever, um, let's see, amortized out your, if you see how much you're going to actually pay, if you run out your 30 year mortgage, oh, yeah. you don't qualify. you see what, see how much the bank oh, makes. Oh yeah, absolutely. And so if you go, can I step into that role? And, um, Maybe because if you're holding the paper and let's say we get a huge spike in, in increase in, in, um, in the market and the price property prices go up like crazy in five years and you're holding a lot of paper, those people are going to probably refi and you're, you're the one they're refining with. So it's, um, it's very interesting on, on how the spreads work, work that way, but it's definitely, Mm -hmm. you know, what we've averaged over our five, six years have been comparable to what, you know, flipping the real estate to was, if, if not, if not better. Yeah, we've yeah. been very, 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 very high double digits um, all the time, pretty much since we started. So yeah. we've been fortunate. That's great. That's, That's, great. Great. That's great. And and you're running a model now that probably is much more efficient from the standpoint of running all over town and doing, you know, like the property stuff is very physical. It tends to be right. Like you got to go look at it. You got to go do something with it. Something just happened. You got to go check it out. But with notes, I mean, you're able to scale that up and invest pretty much anywhere because most of what you're doing is virtual, right? Yeah. I, most of what we're doing is virtual and we're, we're leveraging, um, you know, BPOs and we're leveraging real estate agents that are, you know, local boots on the ground in the areas that we're investing right? and able to, to use, let them be our eyes and ears. And then obviously on the paper side, um, we, you know, we have a whole bunch of third parties that we use to, to really leverage stuff so we can sit at our desk and run it from, you know, from headquarters here. Yeah, in yeah. From HQ, yeah. the ivory tower. It's, it's it yeah. can be, but it's still, <laughs> as anybody that's in the real estate, uh, game knows, I mean, we still are in charge. We have a, a girl that, that does it. Uh, Miriam, who's a very valued member of our team, She's, you know, running a lot of the day-to-day stuff with the assets. You know, I think we have about 125 right now all over the country. And um, at before, that's obviously we've come to this point to prove our concept over the five years before we start scaling big time now. But the infrastructure that's in place to be able to manage that, Mm -hmm. um, you're dealing still with the same stuff. That handyman that you got to get there are don't show up. They overquote you because when you say, hey, we're the bank essentially, but we're not a big bank, but we are the controlling entity here. What were they doing back in 08 through 12? These companies that were like, yeah, I'll cut the lawn. Uh, Bank of America, it's $375 a cut. That right. just gets pushed through. And so we have to remind the guys, that's not us. Yeah. We're not a big account. We're actually seeing all the accounts and like going, uh, what is this? $375 yeah, no. to cut the, the lawn, which which happens all the time. Um, no, this isn't flying. So there's still that that piece that you have to police yeah. and uh, and you have to over overlook that. So more or less, we're kind of overlooking everything. We are third partying out a lot of stuff because that's to leverage and to scale. We have to. But we still have to police that the servicer that's servicing our notes. Um, right. We still have to make sure that they're interests are are our best interests or, well, they're aligned with us and, yeah. and that's kind of the, the like right now what our biggest um biggest battles are it's it's not so much buying the, we know what we can do to buy the assets and stuff like that now it's more or less looking at the system that we've created is now um becoming how okay how do we do it at scale and still like be effective constantly refine it get the processes in place to uh to move forward and you know run a success it's a double-edged sword because you got you, you want to you want to really slay it and do good for your investors uh, and, and turn them great yields. But then you got that that socially responsible side that you're like, OK, we can turn a 12 percent yield and save this person's home. We could turn a 40 percent yield and take it back. Yeah, Where, yeah it, that's up to you as, as an investor. That's what you want to do. It, it's uh, you know, there's no right way to do it. But that's the, it's very tough. I mean, it, it, that's some of the difficulties. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know you guys. I know you guys really enjoy. Uh, I mean, you like the side of the business that you help people stay in your house. My guess is when you first started investing and, and, and moving into notes, my I don't know this for sure about you, but my first thought would be like, it's another way for me to get houses. Yep. Right. Uh, yep. But over time, you realize, hey, man, I, we could make a lot of money by helping people stay in their house. We just have to restructure. And so talk a little bit about that part of it, because, you know, it's one of those things that I know you guys uh, care a lot about. Right. But I think uh, I think most people assume that banks and lenders and people that are, you know, in the position you're in are bad people and they just care about the house and don't care about the people. But. Uh, I know that's not the case with you guys. Just talk a little bit about how how you realize that, and then the importance of that in, in this part of the business. 
Sure. Yeah, I, I know uh, in our business they're they're called vulture funds. A lot of people think that it's just everyone's a, a big bunch of vultures that we're just trying to get the house back. Yeah. We don't yeah. care about the bars, but like you said, that is certainly not the case. Um, and we did jump into the business because it was a cheaper way to buy houses and it was another source of inventory. And then we had people that weren't giving the house over to us, and they was like, "No, we want to keep the house." And I remember the first time that we actually said, "Okay." Um, let's work with these people. And they started, you know, they were literally crying on the phone yeah, with us yeah. because we were treating them like people. We we're like, all right, well, how about we'll just short sell you the house and we'll, we'll give you uh, you know, we'll sell you the house for, I think they owed like 60 and we were into it for 20 and we said, we'll, we'll give you the house for 35 grand. And they, they were able to come up with the money and they were so happy. And it, it sort of just kind of snowballed from there to where we realized Wow, the more we talk to people, there are people on the other end of these uh, yeah. these loans, yeah. and they really want to keep their house. And we can do a good, we can make a really great return and still and still save the house and and do something which is socially responsible. And that's sort of how now we start measuring our investments. Are is this going to be doing the right thing by not just our investors, but by the people on the other end? Yeah, yeah, and and not just by the investors. Uh, you know, are we making a, an investment decision that's going to positively affect um, our current generation that we're in, and then generations to come? Mm -hmm. So we kind of like. You know, we're trying to influence the stakeholders that are in our space with the little bit of a platform that we have to start to make investments decisions, you know, underpinned by those social and ethical values. Uh, if you have a chance to um, align money with meaning um, and still, you know, obviously we're all in it to make money. I mean, I have a no new baby on the way. He's got three kids. Rick does. And we all have families. We understand we have to make money. However, you don't have to be so quick to pull the trigger and that what we've seen is a lot of these people have been unfairly foreclosed on and it just makes me, it really makes me upset and mad that yeah. that is because they don't have the means and they don't have the voice um, to, to come to the table and actually fight for their right. They get their houses stripped from them and it's uh, when you when you actually label somebody like that, you dehumanize them as they're a non-performing loan and let's face it, if they're a big shop and they're running a portfolio of 100,000 loans, you're in charge of 1,000 of them, here's your, here's your stack on your desk, you're going one after the other, you're phone calling, boom, 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 boom. You're looking at non-performing mm -hmm. loan, you're not looking at John and Sally Smith with right. three kids um, right. that are very struggling, they just had a, a major hardship in their life. Yeah, actually, so, absolutely. Yeah, that that or that like holistic approach of being able to reach out is why we're really trying to promote to the smaller investors mm -hmm. that these smaller loans can be given to. We can democratize this and give them to those smaller investors through paper stack um, and, and all these different types of um, you know mortgage uh, note trading platforms out there to be able to do the right thing. Because let's face it, um, a reperforming loan. Even if you don't care about the socially responsible side, sells for more. So yeah, if you yeah. keep that person in by default, you're going to get more money for it than saying, "Give me the house back." And um, so yeah, yeah, it's just a it's a it's a major passion of ours now, and it really underpins the values um, of of what we're really striving to do with our our next fund. That's awesome. And yeah, my so, guess is, uh, my guess is the people that you're dealing with have you know they just feel when they when they were when the mortgage was owned by a larger bank, like you said, they just kind of were forgotten about, like. Oh, they just th sure. thought they were a number ultimately. And they just, at some point people just say, I don't know what we're going to do, but just stop making the payments and we'll just deal with it. Right. But right. Then when they start to talk to somebody on the other end of the phone that they know is a human being and cares about, you know, cares about them as well. I mean, like you said, it is a business and you have to treat it that way, but there's a way to do it where you, uh, you kind of give them some more respect. My guess is that they're much more likely to want to work it through with you than they would be some call center rep in around halfway around the world. Right. For sure. Yeah. And, for it, sure. and it's, you know, look, I'm not defending everybody out there. There's bad actors sure, that are, sure. and there's people that are going to use the system. Yeah. But what we've seen out of, let's just say on a scale, 80 to 85, 90% of the people that we've talked to, um, you know, isn't that just, they're not lacking character. They're just lacking money. Yeah. I mean, that's what it is. It, it's yeah. like they just weren't given the opportunity because they didn't fit into those profit margins for those bigger institutions, or, which I'm not blaming the bigger they, institutions either. You know, a lot of them, a lot of them lost their job in 2008, 9, 10. And once you fall 12 months behind on your payments or eight months behind, it's really hard to get caught up. Yeah. And the, yeah. the banks just never gave them a, a very good deal. 
Right. Uh, some of the loan modifications that we've seen that these that these people come up with it are it's absolutely ridiculous. So yeah. you know, just yeah. a quick scenario. I've heard some stories. <laughs> yeah, if you're upside down on the bank uh, on your house by a hundred thousand dollars, but they American give you a better payment? monthly payment, you're like. Where's my American dream? Majority of our country relies, if something were to happen drastically and they don't have equity in their, most Americans rely on equity in their home to be able to help with a $5,000 bill. I mean, there's a lot of people out there that's $5,000 like, well, who would have a problem with that? I mean, that's majority of our country are like, if something happens and I don't have equity to pull, unfortunately, you know what? We're screwed. I mean, that's just how it is. And um, yeah. So what we try to do is give these people back the American dream the best way we can, you know, mm -hmm. principal reduce them down to yeah. where they actually, because then it's going to pay again. You yeah. Know, it just makes sense. And you can afford to, too. By the time it's gotten down to you guys and yep. you're paying a very small percentage of the total value, you can afford to pass that of them, some of that back to them to get it performing again, right? When the, when the banks are like looking at it, like, you know, um, when it's more at the top of the funnel, when it hasn't been heavily discounted yet, there's just no room to do that, right? Exactly. It's just numbers yeah. at that point. Their, their, their systems are not put in place to say it's John and Sally Smith. And, and that's not their job. And I don't expect right. them to do that. They're dealing with hundreds and hundreds of yeah. thousands of loans. So it's yeah. just uh, their products of, um, of the systems that are antiquated um, that are put there, in place. Yeah. But they're there. And it's created this niche and gave us the opportunity right. and a lot of other people um, the opportunity to, one, make a really good business um, out of something mm -hmm. and, uh, and to help people out if you want to. Yeah. You yeah. Don't, hey, cool guys. Get, get hey, maybe, maybe take a minute and for folks that are listening and says, wow, this sounds interesting. I can be the bank. I, you know, might be able to find some deals that I can't find right now. Like it might be a different vehicle, but I want to learn more about this. Where, where would people kind of get started? How can they learn more? Um, well, we're, we're going to give all your listeners uh, an, um, a Note Force Academy, which is our, our training program. We're just going to give it to them and let them train on there. It's noteforceacademy.com uh, oh, wow. forward slash flip nerd. So we know where they're coming from. Um, and we will definitely be happy to do that. But education, you need to educate yourself. Um, yep. That's the first thing because you it, there while there is a lot of parallels between real estate there is a lot of stuff to learn so you can navigate one of these deals successfully. Um, and then you, you want to look for inventory. And we actually, we have inventory available on paperstack.com that you can go search and look at inventory. Um, tell us real so, fast what, what paperstack is. You mentioned it a few times, but maybe just tell us, uh, kind of summarize what it is. Sure. Uh, well, let me spell it first because there's no K at the end. It's P-A-P-E-R-S-T-A-C.com. And it's a it's a note trading platform. It's a place. It's a marketplace for people to go buy and sell notes. Okay. And if you're, if you're interested in seeing what like a mortgage note um, asset for sale would look like, it's a great place to go, and you can just check it out and cruise through and take a look at the notes that we have for sale. But we when we started um, after we'd been buying notes for a while in the business, we did a couple purchases that were pretty scary. And in that we were putting money out into escrow with somebody that we really didn't know. And we were like, this, this has got to change. It's a great investment, but it needs to be brought to the mainstream. And yep. um, so we yep. set out to try to, to, to bring some transparency to the process. Yeah, and, that's awesome. And uh, Paperstack was created for that. And we've been in development on it for three years. It launched in September and have been very well recepted by not only new investors in the area, but people that have been in the investment um, in the note space for, for 30 years. Yeah, so that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I mean, paper stacks, more of a, more of a system, more of a process that we're like, you know, you have to do a, to get to B, B to get to C, C to get to D. And yep. if you're an investor, you don't want to have to relearn an entire, because there's a lot of steps, a lot of I's to dot and a lot of T's to cross. Why don't we just make it simple for everybody saying that it's like a linear progression where it's everything's done on a timeline. Trading yeah. notes on a timeline is kind of what we say there. Look, buy the note, you know, even if you're an inexperienced person and you buy it through like a paper stack technology, you can go, this is what I need to do next. And then it's going to tell you, this is what you have to do next. Did you get FPI insurance, first place insurance? On, and mm -hmm. and you kind of run through the process of uh, of what it is. But it's, uh, yeah, it's fantastic. Paper stack, P-A-P-E-R-S-T-A-C, Dot com and then our main uh, company is cloud capital management that's the the grand poopa that's the big company <laughs> that's where we're running the um we're, we're going to be you know starting our capital raise on a regulation a plus fund um to scale our efforts um so in 18 we'll we'll be starting that and um, we're very excited about that um yeah so we'd love to love more. to tell you the progress on that as we as we go through that because that's a whole nother sure 
show that reg a plus space yeah, is really yeah. exciting the jobs act has done a lot for us small investors and yeah we're absolutely absolutely awesome well, we're going to add links for all that stuff down below here net for uh, node force academy uh paper stack and cloud capital management so if anybody that's listening wants to learn more just uh or if you listen on itunes just go to flipnerd.com uh, shows and you'll find the expert interview show and um and just search out this show number 378 and uh, we'll have all these links down below if you're if you're going down the highway listening to this right now. So don't try to don't no, try don't to, try like, to it down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Awesome, guys. Well, hey, this has been great information for those that are listening. Hopefully, uh, you see a, a new opportunity here to to jump into a different type of investment that's not not all that different, right? No, it's not all that different, but there it's a lot of opportunity. So yeah, hope, yeah. Hope it um, shines a light on it for some people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, awesome. Well, guys, thanks for uh, spending some time with us today. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Appreciate Mike. it. Awesome show, man. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, guys. I, I couldn't do it without guys like you. So, hey, everybody, this is episode number 378, um, we're talking all about uh, notes today. So, appreciate you spending some time with us today. Um, if you haven't yet, please go out to iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Google Play, any, anywhere anywhere where you listen to a show or even watch it on YouTube and uh, subscribe and, and give us a positive rating. We'd appreciate that. That's the that's what kind of gives me energy to keep doing this after 378 shows. <laughs> so we're going to keep cranking as long as you guys keep uh, giving, giving us some love. Appreciate you. We'll see you on another upcoming episode. Take care. Thanks for joining us for this episode of the Flipnerd.com Investing Show. If you're not yet an elite member of Flipnerd, you're missing out. We have tons of great training, including a new detailed master class published each month and live training webinars with experts twice a month. Plus, you'll get access to all of our archives where we already have a growing library of master classes and other training videos. Elite members also get membership in our incredible online mastermind group where many of the top real estate investors from across the country, including many of the hundreds of guests I've had on the show in the past, are already members. Whether you're brand new, looking to get started, or a veteran, you simply must join today. I promise you won't be disappointed. To learn more or join today, please visit flipnerd.com slash lab. That's flipnerd.com slash lab. See you on the next show.